Everything and nothing. The theme of the book of Philippians is joy. I've always found that interesting because Paul wrote this book while he was in prison. And if I, if I know much about prison, it probably wasn't joy because of being in prison. <laughs> His joy was in the Lord. And it's a book of four chapters, and each chapter is a picture of Christ. Chapter 1 it shows life's purpose. Chapter 2 is life's pattern. Chapter 3 is life's prize. Chapter 4 is life's power. And all of those are found in Christ. Every one of those are found in Christ. And that's the key. That's the thing I want us to look at this morning. You know, our hope is found in Christ. Chapter 3, verse 20, he says, Our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior. That's our hope, is Christ. Our purpose. <coughs> Chapter 1, he said, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That, that's our purpose, is Christ. Uh, our power, you, you probably know, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. That's Philippians 4.13. Our power is found in Christ. Um, Philippians 4.4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. And as we look at this this morning, I want to show you uh, three things in uh, chapter 4 here uh, in Christ. Uh, stand fast in the Lord, stand together in the Lord, and stay rejoicing in the Lord. Let's read uh, Philippians 4. I'm going to read verses 1 through 7. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and long for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Eodius and beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord alway, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. we just stop reading there. Now, I have preached this sermon before. Uh, so if you've heard it, uh, you're going to hear it again. Uh, the thing I was noticing, the last time I preached this message, uh, I had just had a operation for cancer, and I didn't know it, but within a few weeks I would have an operation uh, on my heart. And, uh, you know, just looking back and, and I'm thinking about those physical situations, uh, I don't remember being particularly distressed. Uh, the worst part was making the decision about the cancer operation, what to do. And once that decision was made, uh, you know, you can, you can have peace in the Lord, whatever your situation. And what a blessing it is to look back and think, oh, maybe I should have been upset. <laughs> but you don't have to be in the Lord. And we're going to see some things this morning that I think will be a, I hope will be a blessing to you. I know it's been a blessing to me. Uh, the first one there in verse 1. Did you notice the love in verse 1? <laughs> I, I don't know if this is suitable or not, but I tell you, this verse reminds you of when you see your granny and she pinches your cheek and she says, oh, you're so big, just love this boy, you know, and they embarrass you, you know. And that's kind of the way this verse is. My brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord. My dearly beloved, he just throws that in there again, you know. Uh, there's a lot of love in that verse. And uh, we need to be loved. But you know, for people to be loved, we need to love. And that's part of standing fast in the Lord. One of the main characteristics of our Lord and one of the main characteristics we need to grab a hold of as Christians is to love. And it's not always easy. <laughs> not everybody's easy to love. Uh, but the Bible says, so stand fast in the Lord. Uh, you know, as, as a church, we have a covenant relationship. You know, there are certain things you should expect from this church. But let me tell you, there's also certain things this church should expect from you. There's responsibilities. That's part of love. You know, you, you see it in your family. You should. Uh, you see it in relationships. You know, it's not just casual. It's not just, well, maybe I'll do this, maybe. No, there's a commitment. And that's what, what God showed us in Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He made a commitment to us. Uh, up to death, even. Uh, we, we need to love and to be loved. And that's, that's part of 
standing fast. The other part, of course, is just the word stand fast. It means perseverance. It means to keep standing. You know, it's not enough just to stand a little bit. We need to keep standing. In uh, 1 Corinthians 16 and, and verse 13, pretty much the, the same words. He says, watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. The next verse says, let all your things be done with charity. You know, perseverance, standing fast in love go, go hand in hand. God wants us to, to stand fast. In Ephesians, he told them, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. The way we're going to stand, the way you're going to stand as an individual is in the Lord. It's not going to be by self-improvement. It's not going to be by some government uh, grant. <laughs> it's going to be by the Lord. We need to come to the Lord and uh, in love uh, receive His love and uh, share it with others. Every, every sermon's got to have a poem. When things go wrong as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't quit. Life is odd with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns. And many a failure comes about when we might have won if we'd stuck it out. Stick to your task, though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with one more blow. Success is failure turned inside out. The silver tint of the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are, may be near, when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when your hardest hit. It's when things seem worst that you mustn't quit. Now, hang in there. You know, persevere. Stand fast in the Lord. Now, you know, it, that's, that applies to our church, but it especially applies to us as, as individuals. Uh, whether anyone else does right or not, we need to stand fast in the Lord. The second thing, verse 2, stand together in the Lord. Here, here's a couple of ladies, I guess, in the church. He says, I beseech you, Odious, and beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the Lord. Now, he, uh, I've heard people call these ladies odious and soon touchy. <laughs> uh, they were having a problem. Now, that's not uncommon in a church. Anytime you have relationships, you're, you're going to face problems. But, you know, we have common ground for working together. Now, the Bible talks there about having the same mind in the Lord. You know, that's a key. We could all be tuned to each other and be wrong. But if we'll be tuned to the Lord, we'll be right. And if you'll be tuned to the Lord, and I'll be tuned to the Lord, we'll have the mind of Christ. We'll have the same, the same mind in the Lord. Earlier in Philippians 2.5, he said, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Hey, if we'll seek to have the mind of Christ, uh, that'll help us a lot in our relationships with each other. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he talks about the differences and the sameness. You know, it's amazing all the differences we have. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4, he says, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. You see, we're different. God made us different. God didn't want us all to look and act and be the same. He made us individuals. We're not going to, you know, there's some religions where the goal of their religion is for them to disappear. <laughs> Man, that's a, why would somebody join that religion? They just want to disappear into some great nothingness. Well, that's not the way God made us. God made you in the image of God. He made you, you. There's going to be differences, but there's also sameness. Same Lord, same Christ, same Holy Spirit. And uh, we have common ground for working together if we know Christ. As well, in verse 3, he says at the end, whose names are in the book of life. Our names are recorded in the same book if we're saved. <laughs> and when you got saved, your, your name's in the book of life. And someday we're going to spend eternity in heaven together. We might as well start practicing. Uh, we have common ground for, for working together. Sometimes it's going to be difficult. But remember the, at least these two things. Rejoice in the Lord, and the Lord is at hand. You know, no matter how difficult a situation, 
You can put up with it when you know that it's not forever. This too shall pass. It came to pass. Now, we can rejoice in the Lord. God decides what we rejoice about, or how we rejoice, maybe I should say. Uh, Romans 15, verse, verse 5, he says, The God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another, according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive you one another, as Christ also received us, to the glory of God. I rejoice in the Lord. Not everybody's saved. Not all saved people are obedient. Some people are irritating. <laughs> you know, sometimes they, it's just the way it is sometimes. But we need to rejoice in the Lord. Okay. We're not going to get our joy from, from people. We're going to get our joy from the Lord. And secondly, remember, the Lord is at hand. Uh, it won't be that long. I was reading, uh, I'm reading through Genesis right now. Man, some of those people lived a long time. Hey, how could you stand it? <laughs> 900 years. You think, Man, my, my bones are aching. I'm the age some of those guys were when they got married. <laughs> and, wow, that's a long time. But you know what? No matter how long it is on this earth, it's nothing compared to eternity. Jesus is coming again. Uh, he's going to sort it out. That's what he says there at the end of verse 5. The Lord is at hand. Uh, re remembering those two things, rejoicing in the Lord and the Lord is at hand, can cause us to live verse 5. Let your moderation be known unto all men. You know what moderation is? It's being sweetly reasonable. God wants us to be sweetly reasonable. Now, you know, with some people, you just hope they're saved. Now, I remember when my kids were little, sometimes we'd meet somebody and they'd say, Dad, is that person a Christian? I don't know, son. You know, some people, there's just not much evidence of, of salvation. They might tell you they're saved, or maybe they don't even. Uh, you don't know if, if people are saved or not. If they're not saved, well, we pray that they will be. If they are saved, we pray that they'll, they'll be like Jesus. But let me say this. For both, whether a person is saved or not, we treat them as lovingly as we would any lost person. You know, really. I, I've, seen, I've seen Christians treat lost people so lovingly and save people so badly. I don't know why we think we should do that. Um, somebody said, we're the only ones who, who shoot our wounded. <laughs> we don't want to do that. Uh, we need to rejoice in the Lord. We need to stand together in the Lord. Now, there's going to come difficult situations. And if you've lived more than five minutes, you face something, you know. Uh, difficult situations come. Stand fast in the Lord. Stand together in the Lord. And then thirdly, verses 4 and 5, stay rejoicing in the Lord. Stay rejoicing in the Lord. Verse 4, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. If you go back to chapter 3, verse, verse 1, this theme comes up a lot in Philippians. He says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. You know where we usually rejoice? In the flesh. God says, that's not where our rejoicing is. It's not whether we're feeling good. You know, sometimes we'll say it. We'll say, oh man, had a good day today. God really blessed me today. Let me tell you something. God blesses you every day. <laughs> and it's true for me too. God blesses us. So, just so much, every good thing is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God is always good. Amen. And we need to be careful that we're not rejoicing in the flesh but that we're rejoicing in the Spirit. We worship God in the Spirit. You know, religion is rejoicing in the flesh. You know, there's lots of religions around. And the basic difference between Christianity and religion is that God's, God says our, our worship is in the Spirit, not in the flesh. Not by works of righteousness, which we've done, but according to His mercy, He saves us. And what a blessing that we can stay rejoicing in the Lord. One, because the Lord is at hand. You know, he's going to return. Jesus is coming soon. We use the word imminent. Jesus could come any time. Man, we can, we can rejoice in that. But you know as well, we can rejoice in, in that the Lord is at hand and that He's, if you're saved, He's in you. He's with you. 
His presence is there. There's, if you're saved, there's nowhere you can go to get away from the Lord. The psalmist said, Whither shall I flee from thy, thy presence? You know, where are you going to go to get away from the Lord? Ephesians 2.13, he says, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. We've been brought nigh, next, next to him. Uh, we often use Galatians 2.20, and one of the phrases there is, Christ liveth in me. We can rejoice because the Lord is at hand. Colossians 1.27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. God tells us to rejoice in the Lord. He also tells us to rejoice always. Now, that's a very complicated word. <laughs> it means all the time, at all times. It's not very complicated. Uh, there, there's a parallel passage in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16. This would make a good memory verse, real easy. Rejoice evermore. <laughs> you can remember that. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. God tells us to rejoice always. There's a strange verse, I, I think, that when Jesus spoke to his disciples in Luke chapter 6, every time I read this, I think, man, that's a strange verse. Uh, Luke 6, verse 22, he says, Blessed are you when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy. <laughs> That's the last statement I would expect after that first verse. God says we can rejoice even in times of, of trouble, in times of, of persecution. Now this particular one is being persecuted for following the Lord, for, being, for living as a Christian. It says, For behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. God tells us to, to rejoice, even in persecution. You know, that's, that's exactly what happened with the disciples. As they were preaching in the name of Jesus and, and told to quit preaching in the name of Jesus, they kept preaching in the name of Jesus, and they would get arrested for it. In Acts chapter 5, verse 41, it says, They departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. <laughs> you know, that, that's a different way of looking at life, isn't it? And the Bible tells us we need to rejoice in the Lord. We need to rejoice always. You know, of course we, we rejoice when there's benefit. You know, we rejoice that we're saved. The Lord told the disciples, don't rejoice because the spirits are subject to you. Rejoice that your name's written in, in heaven. Rejoice in your salvation. Uh, we rejoice in hope. You know, rejoice in, in hope, he says in Romans chapter 12. He tells us not to rejoice in iniquity. You know, we're not, we're not glad for sin, but when sin is afflicting us, we can rejoice in the Lord. And I find it amazing that rejoicing is often combined with sorrow. I think there's something about sorrow that reminds us we have a lot to be thankful for. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 10. He's talking about his own ministry, and he says, As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. There is a certain sorrow about life. The Bible calls, called Jesus a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Uh, you know, there's a sorrow to see our world subject to sin. There's a sorrow to see people afflicted by sin. But he says, as sorrowful yet, yet always rejoicing. There's always hope. There's always rejoicing in, in Jesus Christ. In uh, 2, 2 Corinthians 7, verse 9, he says, Now I rejoice... Not that you were made sorry. He'd had to discipline these people. He says, but that you sorrowed to repentance. You know, often sorrow and, and, and rejoicing are, are linked. In uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is when he talks about... 1 Thessalonians 4.13, he, he says, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. He's talking about those who've already died. There's sorrow when people die. But as Christians, there's also hope. There's also rejoicing. And the Bible says that the angels in heaven rejoice when they receive a Christian home. Uh, we need to understand that uh, rejoicing is, is the way the Lord wants us to live. Uh, we sang that, that song last week, um, and live rejoicing every day. 
That's the way God wants us to live. He wants us to stand fast in the Lord, to stand together in the Lord, and to stay rejoicing in the Lord. And that brings us to the, to the transaction that, uh, that I wanted us to get to here in Philippians chapter 4. In verses 6 and 7, he says, Be careful for nothing. Now that's not the way we would say it today, but it's very clear and very accurate. Being careful is full of care, worry, anxious. And nothing is nothing. <laughs> he said, what he's basically saying is don't worry about anything. Be careful for nothing. So let me ask you, what are we allowed to worry about? Nothing. Do we obey that? Man, I was struggling with that last night. He says, be careful for nothing. That's the nothing. Here's the everything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. God wants us to pray about everything. Pray about everything. In 1 Peter 5, he says, Casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Every care. Being honest with the Lord. I came across a quote from a Bible scholar in the, in the Middle Ages, whenever that was. This is interesting. Listen to this very clear, carefully. Tell God all that is in your heart. As one unloads one heart, one's heart, its pleasures and its pains, to a dear friend. Tell him your troubles, that he may comfort you. Tell him your joys, that he may sober you. Tell him your longings, that he may purify you. Tell him your dislikes, that he may help you to conquer them. Talk to him of your temptations, that he may shield you from them. Show him the wounds of your heart, that he may heal them. Lay bare your indifference to good, your depraved taste for evil, your in instability, Tell him how self-love makes you unjust to others. How vanity tempts you to be insincere. How pride disguises you to yourself as to others. If you thus pour out all your weaknesses, needs, troubles, there will be no lack of what to say. You'll never exhaust the subject. It is continually being renewed. People who have no secrets from each other never want subjects of conversation. They do not weigh their words, for there's nothing to be held back. Neither do they seek for something to say. They talk out of the abundance of the heart, without consideration, just what they think. Blessed are they who attain to such familiar, unreserved intercourse with God. And what he's talking about there is just being honest with God. Prayer is not a speech. Prayer is, is sharing our heart with our Lord and Savior, the one who tells us to rejoice in Him. One who tells us to rejoice together in Him. Who tells us to, to stay rejoicing. Uh, he tells us, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Y you know, I think oftentimes we get that backward. We worry about everything and pray about nothing. Now, I, I would say this. You want to be honest with God, but you don't necessarily want to pray about all those things publicly. All right? Some of that is, is private stuff. But uh, we want to be honest to God in our prayers. God's promise then, he says, be careful for nothing, pray about everything. Verse 7, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Here's a promise from God. I think most people want peace. And this is God's promise. And he says it's beyond understanding. Listen, you can't go to the chemist and get this in a pill. You can't go to the neurologist and have an operation. This is beyond understanding. This is beyond the physical. This is God doing a work in our hearts and lives. And he says he'll keep your heart and your mind. He'll keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Peace. And what a blessing to think that God can give us peace. All of this, being able to stand, stand together, stay rejoicing, is in the Lord and through the Lord. God can help us. I, I don't know your heart. God does. You may not know your own heart. The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. But God knows your heart. And God wants to do business with you. He wants to help you. He wants you to not worry about things. He wants you to pray about things. And He wants to give you His peace. And that starts by being born again. Trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior. 
The Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Someday we're going to stand before God. And the question is not going to be, how good were you? The Bible says there's none good. That's not the question. The question is going to be, what did you do with Jesus Christ, the one who died for your sins? Do you know him? He's called the Prince of Peace. He's the great Savior. He's the great Shepherd. He's the lover of our soul. You know, when he's talking there in verse 1, my brethren dearly beloved, he's not just talking about his relationship with them. He's talking about God's relationship with them. Longed for. My dearly beloved. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let me encourage you this morning. Uh, you can have the joy of the Lord. You can have the peace that only God can give. But it comes through Christ. So stand fast in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. God wants you to have uh, these things this morning. Let's go to him in, in prayer. With our heads bowed and in an attitude of prayer. Maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart. Maybe there's some things that are standing between you and God. Maybe you just need to be saved, born again. Whatever you need, God can meet that need today. Father, thank you so much for your goodness to us. Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, we know this is your word. And God, as you speak, help us to honor your word. Help us to apply it to our own hearts and lives. Lord, bless our church through this. Help us to be a, a people of your word. Lord, help us to be people who, who love you and serve you. God, I pray that your will would be done today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.